following program is a paid presentation. Wake up to the Word. Share an uplifting hour with grace and glory and Baltimore's faithful. Well, good morning and welcome once again to Baltimore's number one gospel program, Grace and Glory. We're going international today, not only to inspire, encourage, and empower you with the spoken word and information, but we've got a wonderful guest, an anointed and talented young lady who comes to us all the way from South Africa. She is one of the latest artists to sign with Motown Gospel, and she has a phenomenal sound and an interesting name. Uh, her name is... <laughs> yeah, you notice how I threw that Thank to you, right? You. Yes, yes. Yeah. Uh, Thank so you. So good to see you. It's Thank lovely you. to see you too, Mfundis. Mfundis means pasta. Yes, Mfundis. And, and welcome to America. Thank you so much. Listen, we've, we've got a lot to talk about sure. because I enjoy uh, getting an opportunity to bridge the, the divide yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, between the uh, motherland and the United States. Definitely. So we're going to talk about that and your music when we come back, okay? No problem. All right, looking forward to that. Now let's make our way to our first spoken word, Bishop Dante Hickman, standing by over at Southern Baptist Church right here on Grace and Glory. Welcome to the television broadcast ministry of Southern Baptist Church. And now a word from our pastor, Dr. Dante L. Hickman Sr. Joy to the world, the Lord has come. I'm Bishop Dante Hickman, pastor of the Southern Baptist Church here in East Baltimore and in Hartford County and soon to be in West Baltimore. We thank and praise God for this Advent season. It is the high and holy season of the calendar year for the church in which we thank God for the birth of Christ in the world and the birth of Christ in our individual as well as our collective lives. We've had a fabulous opportunity to celebrate during this season with a celebration of service, having fed over 1,000 families for Thanksgiving and giving over 500 coats to children and families uh, in every community around each one of our locations, as well as six area elementary and middle schools. We give God the praise that we've been able to be a blessing to so many. We invite you as we close out this year in a high and holy fashion to join us in any one of our locations. On uh, next Sunday uh, is Christmas Eve and we will have one service. That's right, we'll be together at 10 in our East Baltimore location at 1701 North Chester Street. And then on that next day, Monday morning, Christmas Day service at 9.30 a.m. at the Southern Church there on Chester Street. I would that you would join us for one hour of powerful worship as we celebrate the birth of Christ. And we will dedicate uh, infants on that morning. Also on the very next Sunday uh, will be the last Sunday of the year and we're going to celebrate it in power and in strength, thanking God for how he has kept us throughout 2023. We'll have our Together at 10 a.m. service in our Hartford County location, there at the Aberdeen High School, and then at 7.30 p.m. and 10.30 p.m., two dynamic New Year's Eve services that will be at our East Baltimore location. And then it doesn't stop there. 2024 is our year to embrace the extraordinary. God is about to take us up another level. God is going to blow your mind in this next year. And so we want to have a one night of extraordinary revival on January the 4th at 7 p.m we will be in revival at our East Baltimore location, featuring the preaching of Dr. Marcus Cosby, pastor of the Wheeler Avenue Baptist Church in Houston, Texas, and Pastor John Adolph, pastor of the Antioch Baptist Church of Beaumont, Texas. You don't want to miss it. You're talking about resolutions. You're talking about resiliency. This is the night in which we believe God is going to empower us to embrace the extraordinary things 
that he has on the horizon in this ensuing year. I'm personally inviting you. Join us in person if you can. And if you can't, join us online. We have plenty of parking. We have plenty of security. But you can also join us on any one of our social media platforms to be blessed. I'm excited. Are you excited? God bless you. Real, real good. And may God continue to keep you through this holiday season. By the time of our text, my dear brothers and sisters, we observe an aged man by the name of Simeon who was able to see Jesus 40 days after he was born. This was special to him because the Holy Spirit had revealed to him that he would not die until he saw Jesus Christ, the Savior of the world. And it happened, according to God's timing and order, that he was able to see Christ and bless him as an infant. It's interesting to note, however, that he didn't have to live to see Jesus fulfill the work of the cross and the plan of salvation. For Simeon, it was enough to see Jesus at birth because he believed God for what God said he would do. And sometimes, my brothers and sisters, we need to trust God without ever knowing the details of how things will happen. I just believe that God's going to do it. He doesn't have to finish it in my time, but if he shows it to me at the beginning, if he starts it in my life, if he tells me that my children and my grandchildren are going to be all right, then I believe God and take him at his word. Our problem sometimes, however, is that we want to know the ending from the beginning. I know that's my problem. I want to know the end before I get started. But we have to learn how to embrace and maximize the process, knowing that our success will come. Subsequently, Simeon endured and embraced the process of seeing Christ before he died but he had to live a long time without his vision coming to pass. And there was nothing he could do to make it happen. Have you ever been there where you have an expectation of something, but it doesn't happen when you want, and then you discover there's nothing you can do to make it happen when you want to make it happen? He had to wait on the fullness of time and the fulfillment of God. And what this text teaches us is that even being righteous will not necessarily make God's will happen for you right away. You can praise him all day and night. You can shout till you blew in the face. You can sow a thousand dollar seed today, but it ain't gonna come tomorrow. No, the Bible describes Simeon as just and devout, but that didn't cause the will of God to come to pass in his life any faster. It does not mean that you should not be righteous. It does not mean that you should not be just or devout. It just means that that won't speed up what God has for your life. But if you are unrighteous, that might slow it down. <laughs> Stop talk back to me today. That that's why we ought to strive to live right for righteousness sake and not merely for the rewards. This text also teaches us that you can have a revelation without a manifestation overnight. You remember Joseph in the Old Testament? The Bible says that Joseph had the favor of his earthly father who gave him a coat of many colors but he also had the favor of his heavenly father who gave him the vision that you're going to be the second in command in Egypt and all your brothers are going to bow down to you you know what that fool did when he got that vision he went out there and told his brothers with his coat of many colors on he thought that his blessing was their blessing he thought that what God was going to do for him was going to make them happy. 
So he went out there and told them before it happened. Said, God gave me a dream. And he told me I'm going to be over all of y'all. And that's when the game got started. And the Bible says that before he got what God was going to give him, he had to go through a pit. He had to go through the false accusations of Potiphar's wife. And he had to go through prison in order to make it to the palace. All I'm trying to tell you is be careful what God told you about telling somebody else. And while David was anointed to be the next king of Israel over Saul, he did not ascend immediately. And can I tell you, my dear brothers and sisters, that God has revealed some things to you that are going to take a little while to fulfill. No, let me just go ahead and put it where to make you upset. It's going to take a long time before you get it. Come on, help me preach. Look at somebody beside you and tell them it's going to take a long time. What you want will not be under the Christmas tree this year. And sometimes all you can do is watch, work, and wait. Sometimes when God shows you something, all you can do is watch, work, and wait. But that's difficult for many of us because most of us long for fulfillment. I know you ain't got to say amen, say ouch. We want what we want when we want it. We want the degree the first day of school. We want the raise the first day on the job. We want the marriage after the first date. And we want the big church right after we start preaching. And it goes on and on and on and on. And the biggest problem of it all is that we want fulfillment without development. Luke 2, 25 says, And behold, there was a man in Jerusalem whose name was Simeon. He was just and devout, waiting for the consolation of Israel. And the Holy Spirit was already upon him. While Simeon was a righteous man, he was a part of a people, listen, that needed to be prepared for the promises of Christ. And whenever God reveals to you a promise, what you should immediately embrace is the process to prepare you for what he has for you. Don't start boasting. Don't, 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 don't start telling everybody. No, when God starts revealing to you what he has for you, start looking at the process that it's going to take to get you ready for what God has. Yes. Yes, I'm excited about what's on the horizon for me. But I know that there are some things that need to be worked out in me first. Am I the only one? Is there anybody in here know you ain't perfect? Know you don't have it all together? Know you don't always think straight? I'm excited about what he has. But I, but, but, but I know he's going to have to do something to get me ready. Before God makes me rich, I got to learn how to be responsible with limited resources. Because you think when you get rich, it's going to get rid of all your problems. No, if you don't know how to handle money, that's when your problems going to start. Before God gives me a spouse, I got to learn how to love myself first. Before God gives me a mansion, I got to learn how to pay my apartment rent on time. God has my destiny on lock. I just need to be developed for it. And he sent me by here to tell somebody, fall in love with being developed for what God has predestined for you. I ain't there yet, but he's working on me. I'm not what I should be yet, but he's working on me. And I'm not so caught up in where he's taking me. I'm thanking God that his hands are on me and I'm going through my process. Most of our lives, we want fulfillment without 
development. And we want fulfillment without contentment. Verse 26 says, it had been revealed to him by the Holy Spirit that he would not see death until or before he had seen the Lord's Christ. So it stands to reason that he wasn't in a rush to see the Lord's Christ because him seeing Christ was tied to his death. And as long as he didn't see Christ, he was going to live as long as he could, but he wasn't going to die until he saw him. He didn't know when he was going to die, but he knew he was going to live until he saw Jesus. Subsequently, in the meantime, he was at peace. And he could be at peace, church, because he already had what the world wouldn't universally receive until Pentecost. And that was the Holy Spirit. Didn't you see it in the text? The Holy Spirit was already in the earth before Acts chapter 2. Some folk had the Holy Ghost in the Old Testament. But, but everybody couldn't have the Holy Ghost until Jesus came and fulfilled his work on the cross. But Simeon said, I already got it. I wish I had a praying house in here that could testify that what the world is looking for, you already got it. What everybody else is chasing after, I already got it. That's why I'm chilling in my mind. I don't have all the money in the world. I'm not living where I want to live. I'm not driving what I want to drive. I don't have all the friends and the accoutrements that I want. But what everybody else is looking for, I already got it. That's why I got peace that surpasses all understanding. And Deacon Corpru, what is patience teaches us is that having peace before and beyond having possessions is priceless. I'm content with having peace with just a piece of the promise. And every day you wake up and every blessing you take up is another piece of the promise. Can I drop this on you? Work on having peace with just a piece of the promise. Come on, somebody shout. I ain't got to have all of it. But if I got a vision that is on the way, I'm all right. Sometime, having a vision that you're going to have a husband is better than having one. I wish I had a witness. I know you can't say nothing because you're sitting next to him. Some of us want. <laughs> oh, yeah, I got you. Some of us want fulfillment without development, without contentment, and without an assignment. The Bible says, he said, Lord, now you let me see. Now you're letting your servant depart in peace. For my eyes have seen your salvation which you prepared before the face of all people. Simeon understood the assignment and that it was bigger than him. And please understand that what God is doing for you and through you and to you is bigger than you. That's why your mess <laughs> has not aborted the blessing because it's bigger than you. God is doing what he's doing through you and me for his name's sake. Somebody ought to thank God for his name's sake. Child, when I think about my sins which are ever before me, when I think about the stuff that I've gotten myself into, and yet God still speaks through me, God still uses me, God still anoints me, 
God still has a purpose for me. I need all the for your name's sake people to jump up and give God a thank God for his name's sake praise. <laughs> Somebody shout, it's for his name's sake. And, and, and sometimes it's for the people's sake. Oh my God. He said, he said, I'm going to use you so that I can bless them because they should not be punished for what you did wrong. That's a good God to me. Bible says that he does it for his name's sake. Yeah. And thank God for the simians of the world who don't make everything all about themselves. And all of us have to grow in our unselfishness to allow God to use us to bless somebody else like we want to be blessed. Yeah. Subsequently, what gives me the greatest fulfillment is knowing that I'm a part of a kingdom agenda that's larger than myself. And it's expanding me, Antonio, towards greater than I could have ever imagined for myself. You know what I've learned how to do? I've learned how to thank God for my failures. Because I found out I didn't know it when I failed. I didn't know it when it didn't work, but after God worked it out, I saw that my failures moved me forward and ended up becoming my favor. I, I, I need everybody who has failed to give God praise for your failure. You ought to thank God for the stuff that did not work in your life that you found out that once he worked it out what he had for you was greater than what you had for yourself and whoever right now is in a disappointment season whoever right now is crying that it didn't work out whoever right now is depressed that somebody walked out on you, I need to encourage you to tell you that what God is about to do for you is about to be bigger. I need you to shout bigger. <laughs> Nevertheless, I'm going to let you go. You can't take all of this because we all need to learn how to embrace expectations without immediate manifestation. Yes, Expectation without immediate gratification. Because if we're not careful, when things don't go our way, right away, we'll become doubtful, disappointed, dysfunctional, and discouraged. But to mitigate against all of that, you gotta hold on to your hope in God. Whatever you lose in life, you got to hold on to your hope in God that it will come to pass. Stop stressing over your blessings, knowing that we're going to live to see it happen. I don't care how old you are, you ain't dead yet because what God has for you hadn't happened yet. You, you have not arrived to what God has for you. Tell your neighbor you're going to live to see it happen. Body might be racking with pain. You might be living with a terminal illness. But you're going to live to see everything God has for you happen in your life. That's why now more than ever, we've got to fast and pray. And study the word of God to know what his promises are over my life. See, you can't get excited about this sermon if you don't really know what God has for you. you. You can't shout over this sermon if you don't know the promises that God has placed over you and in your life. But when you walk with God, and when you talk with God, and when you read the word of God, God will give you a vision. God will give you a desire. 
God will give you a passion that no devil in hell can put out. God will give you a fire that can't nobody extinguish. And while everybody is laughing at you, Noah, you're still building your ark in dry land. And all of a sudden, the rain that God showed you is going to show up. God's going to bless you Ezekiel while you're out there preaching to a valley of dry bones the wind is going to come and bring all of those bones together to be an exceedingly great army and can I tell you my dear brothers and sisters that when you know you're going to live to see it happen you can live on purpose help me preach fist bump your neighbor tell them live on purpose that that's what Simeon did the Bible says he came by the Holy Spirit into the temple and I need you to notice church that Simeon had the consolation the revelation the expectation and the motivation of the Holy Spirit this is all I'm going to give you you can come to the next service or watch it to get the last two points but I need you to know that everything he did was by the guidance of the Holy Ghost somebody help me preach I'm closing I'm not going any further than this first point somebody shout everything he did was by the guidance of the Holy Ghost and you and I don't have to live our lives haphazardly we don't have to live by our emotions and we don't even have to live by the scientific data some people are just data driven but I came to tell you when you got the Holy Ghost the Holy Ghost will allow you to live specifically and definitively according to the will of God I need everybody in here who has the Holy Ghost and not just has the Holy Ghost but the Holy Ghost has you in a way that and he made you smarter than whatever school you went to. He helped you to be more strategic than any job you've ever worked on. He's helped you to have success without having skill because the steps of a good man or woman are ordered by the Lord. And when your steps are ordered by the Lord, you may go against the grain you may go against the normal you may go against the natural but I came to tell you it's because the supernatural is about to happen in your life it's because the extraordinary is about to happen in your life you ought to look at your neighbor and say excuse me I may not do it like you do it I may not be as smart as you are but but there are some things that God is working out in me that he's going to do it with my praise. I wish I had a praising church. Some folk got to go through 10 years of education to get what you got in just one year of serving the Lord. If you praise him, if you serve him, if you trust him, if you believe in him, if you hold on to his unchanging hand, he'll turn your situation all the way around. Have I got a witness here? So you may not always be understood and you may not always be liked, but I don't care whether you like me or not. I don't care whether you understand me or not. I don't care whether you agree with me or not because my orders come from a higher power. My orders come for a greater purpose. And always remember that what God is doing in you is greater. Somebody shout is greater. 
is greater than my personal passion is greater than my personal perspective is greater than my personal pettiness that's why a great God deserves a great praise yes 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 you've been watching the television broadcast of Southern Baptist Church where Dr. Dante L. Hickman Sr. is the pastor Welcome back. Hope you enjoyed our first spoken word. Now we're looking forward to our guest. Seth. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I'm going to get it right eventually. Yeah. When you don't think about it, it's easier. If you it's just easy. say share. So tell us about that. Yes. Uh, your music, uh, your life. Uh, I understand that you're a PK. I am. I'm a pastor's kid. And I'm one of those pastor's kids who did not embarrass <laughs> the <laughs> church. <laughs> Oh, that's good. <laughs> you know, uh, no, I stayed in the church and I stayed in, in, in a relationship with Christ and I stayed um, in love with God very much. Uh, I, I think because that's actually the best gift that I ever received as a human being wow. is being able to grow up in a church and in a, in, a, in, a, in, a, in a staunch church that really believes in God, believes in the word, believes in worship, believes in prayer. And we, at 12 years old, I was going all night prayers, the ladies all night prayers with the old gogos and the old mama. Oh. We were there all praying together, fasting at 12 years old, it, and I and I legitimately enjoyed it. So, so how that's did music a, come about. You know, being a PK, okay. <laughs> you you it happens that you end up doing the involved in some in everything. Yeah, yeah. You are in the catering, you are in the sound, you are in the worship team, you're right. wiping the chairs, everything. You're driving around the pastor, so all those things. It came from that. So for a long time, because of that. I associated singing with helping okay. and not really as something that I need to do as a career. So that's why I actually had ventured into interior design and that's what I studied. I studied interior design and not thinking that me going around and helping all these great artists back home is me actually being prepared to go into that direction. Amazing. Right? So, now, yeah. now, now you've signed with Motown Gospel that here in the United true. States, but you're in South Africa. <laughs> Bridge the divide. How did how did that come together? God. <laughs> that was Good answer. Great the, answer. You know, I always say that people like to say that even how a, a baby is formed is 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 science. I'm like, okay, but explain that part. That part of the, I yeah, understand that like, yeah. there's, there's 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 sperm and then there's egg yeah, that need to but come there's together. Another piece in but there. that's right yeah. there. When they come together, who makes them come together into right. a baby? That right there is something supernatural. And that is proof that God exists. And this right here even Great was that. Point. That even Great, right yeah. there was exactly that, that um, God found me where I was and said, okay, I'll send someone to come and talk to you through your Instagram DMs. He is going to say, hey, my name is EJ Gaines from Motown Gospel. I've been looking for you and I've been, I've been looking at your stuff. I'd like to have a conversation with so you. So you got a DM. A DM from Instagram from the executive at Motown saying not like knowing, to talk not to expecting me. it not expecting it having not prayed for it having not asked for it God just said okay now you have to know that it's time wow. and they had just been seeing stuff that I'd done out of pocket just trying to take stuff out and that that I sewed into is what God used to take me global oh, that's why nice. you have to take your craft seriously at all times whatever it is that you do do it with all your heart. That is what the Bible says. But you know, I, I, of course, I had to do my due diligence because I had to know a little bit more about the, this young lady outside uh. of how to pronounce her name. Which <laughs> I must say the due diligence was easier than learning how to pronounce uh. her name. But 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 when I did, I was so pleasantly uh, uh, impressed yeah. and amazed at the anointed gift that is contained within this package. Man. I saw several of your on online videos and. Yeah. You are a consummate worshiper. Yeah. I mean, you 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 do an excellent job of taking an audience yeah. into the very presence of God. I heard one video where I didn't understand a word you said, but I was being blessed. <laughs> so I didn't sorry. understand a, but the the anointing was so strong it was just oh. blowing me away. Yeah. 
But that's because worship, it's a language in itself, isn't it? That's true. So you understand it even though you don't even know what is being said, but you understand that. It happened to me also once where I was listening to uh, an artist from Zimbabwe, and I didn't know what they were saying, but I immediately knew what they were saying. Yes. I said, this has to do with angels, and this has to do with them worshiping God. And when we got to him and he explained it, he said exactly that, because it's a language. So if we speak this, the, we so, it means we speak the same language. That's right. <laughs> that's, that's it. So, so, um, your signing with Motown yeah. is not your first encounter with recording. Yeah. You, you recorded in South Africa, yes, right? How I many recorded. projects? So I recorded one project in 2019. Okay. I uh, released it in 2020. It was an independent. I had done it just out of pocket from what the money that I wanted to go and, and, and buy a property with. I said, actually, let me go and record. <laughs> so I went and recorded, and God gave me the whole idea of what he wanted me to do, exactly how many songs, how long they should be. He told me the show should be two hours, and it was exactly two hours. Wow. He told me what to do in between, and that's exactly how it happened. So that actually that one album is what opened up doors for everything else that has happened which was part that. of what the motown executives exactly. heard. exactly amazing so now you're here promoting the new single yes tell our viewers about the new single so it's called take heart um and it's just that it's from it's derived from the the, the the verse that in this life you will face many trials and tribulations uh -huh. but take heart for i've overcome the world yeah so that's what the song is about that we have the right to walk in victory we have the right and the authority to walk in that um, triumph because even though the, the weapons come, they don't prosper That's because right. he's overcome the world. Now, you know, of course, I've been blessed. Paul says, I've become all things to all men that I might save, reach some. You know, I have another platform in which we had a chance to talk yes. with you. And you shared with us about the song and then I played it and I was expecting something with a, 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 an African flavor <laughs> or something, something that was motherland, yeah. but it was American. What? <laughs> Why did you choose that as your first single? Because it was my tribute to how um, this territory uh, of these beautiful United States opened up their arms to me, opened up their hearts to me, and just also was a huge part of um, my, my listening um, growth Okay. Oh, you know, my sonic growth, what I know now. You mentioned Vicky Winans. I did, definitely. What do you mean? Long as I got King Jesus. Yeah. Long, of course. So definitely I had to draw from everything that I grew up listening to. So that's where it came from. Listen, I want, I'm enjoying you, but we've got the break now for our next spoken word. Going to come back, close out with our guest. You pronounce the name. Okay, Dr. <laughs> Kenneth Robinson is up next from Dream Life Worship Center right here on Grace and Glory. Today, Dream Life Worship Center of Randallstown, Maryland brings you an uplifting message for you to trust God, believe on Jesus, and be led by the Holy Spirit. So let's go. Some people come to church, but others come to worship. How many came to worship? Interesting characters because Martha always is excited, always excited. And so she runs out when she hears Jesus is coming. And she says, Jesus, Lord, if you would have been here. You know, I can see that Pentecostal thing. And I, Lord, if you'd have been here. Oh, Lord. My brother would have been saved. All right. And Jesus, Jesus, Jesus said, uh, Martha, your brother going to rise again. She said, oh, yes, hallelujah. Yes, Lord, I know in the resurrection he's going to be, he's going to rise with all the saints. Yeah, Lord. He said, no. Mm -mm. I am the resurrection. He that believed on me, though he would dead, dead shall he live. Oh, somebody shout. In, in other words, if you can just get the presence of God in your situation, if you can just honor his presence, if you can just take a moment to worship him, or come on, in the midst of it, if you can get in his presence, listen, he says, whatever was dead or wasn't happening, it was in my presence, if you believe, he says, I'm able to raise it from the dead. And he's walking. And now he comes to the other sister, Martha. 
Because these you see these left these things regarding your faith. He's walking in Martha. Mary, Mary didn't even come out to see him. The Bible said Martha ran out to him, but Mary was like, okay, I'll see him with Jesus when he get here. See, the Bible said, that's what the Bible said. She was just sitting there, sitting at home. She knew Martha had left off. She's like, you know, I'll just, he'll get here. And when, he, when she finds out he's on his way to the house, she then decides to get up and go to him. And she says the same thing to Jesus. Jesus, if you would have been here, my brother would have never died. Come on, is there anybody in here that has felt that God, if you would have come when I prayed, I would not be dealing with all this regret right now. All this unnecessary disappointment. If you would have just, if this would have just happened in my life, just think how much happier I would have been like you, God. No, no. He's working on something. And so the Bible says in verse 33 through 33, I'm at time, got to run through this, got to get to the end of it. Jesus is weeping and is groaning. But look, look at it real quickly. I need you to see this because I got to teach you this. I want you to see this here. The Bible says in verse 33, then Jesus saw them weep. He comes there and, and Mary is worshiping, but she's crying. And Jesus saw her weeping and he came, watch, he saw the rest of them weeping. And he groaned in his spirit and was troubled and said, where have you laid them? They said to him, Lord, come and see. And Jesus wept. Then the Jews said, see how he loved him. And some of them said, watch this, criticism. Could not this man who have opened the eyes of the blind also have kept this man from dying? See, that's what happens when your situation is on hold. People will start talking. Come on, y'all. Can I just talk to you for a moment? Now, the Bible says he was groaning. About five more minutes, if you can say, hang with me. He was groaning. Now, here's what's important to understand about groaning. Because this is, this is Jesus praying in the spirit. This is him. Because sometimes a situation can can be so troubling that you don't have English words to pray. And you pray, come on, you listen to me. But while you're praying in the spirit, something is happening in the realm of the spirit that's about to birth a reality in your natural realm. He was not groaning because he didn't know it was gonna happen. He, and, and the Bible says Jesus wept. That was part of the human side of him, but he wasn't weeping the way they were weeping. They were weeping because they thought they'd never see Lazarus again. But he was weeping because they didn't believe him. Oh, y'all, y'all. Why, if you know you get ready to raise somebody up, why would you be crying too? He's not crying over your situation. You may be tripping, but he's not crying. Because he knows what he's about to do. Look at somebody say, he's about to do something. And the reason why they were weeping, listen to me very carefully, is because when they put the stone there, back in those days, you could be buried. But when they took that huge stone and placed it in front of the grave, that meant final. No coming back. Never changing when that grave, and, and many of them would get what they call seals. They would get governmental seals on that grave, which means nobody can touch it because this is it. Final. <laughs> oh, I hope you can hear what I'm saying. And some of you, the Lord says, have put a period in places where God is about to put a comma in. You have given up. You have put a period there. You have said it will never happen for me. It'll never happen for me. My, this, my dream is not going to happen. This marriage will never be the same. This all you listen, my money will never be what I've been saying. God is saying, you have put a period, and I'm about to put a comma where you put a period. In other words, not only have you put a period on it, Brother Will, but some people around you have put a period on it. Are you listening to me? 
they have given up on you. They have thrown you out the wood window. They have said, it is done. But I hear the Lord saying, I am about to put commas in every place where people have put periods, where they have counted you out, where they said it was dead and it will never come back. God says, comma, I need you to get three people and just get up out of your seat and tell them God says, comma, regarding your sickness, comma, regarding your debt, comma, regarding your unsaved children. You might have put a period there. You might have said it's all over. Yes, because you've cried all night. Yes, because it broke your heart. But God says, no, 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 no. No period. Just comma. Because a comma means that the sentence is not over yet. And I'm here to tell somebody it's not over until God says it's over that child it's not over come on tell somebody comma your finances yes it's been hard in 2023 but do you believe get somebody that believes with you and just shout comma I got the wrong church because some of y'all ain't believing and I'm not trying to get you to get up because I need you to endorse what I'm saying. I know heaven has given me this for you. I'm trying to get you activated in faith. I'm trying to get everything in your body to start trusting what God said. Now get out of your seat and tell somebody God has just placed a comma a comma where you have put a period in other words i'm about to heal i'm about to make you whole i'm about to turn it all around i'm about to raise you up somebody shout yes shout yes Here's some, some real quick instructions. I'm gonna give you real quick instructions. I'm done. He says, first thing I want y'all to do, first thing I need y'all to do is take away the stone. Because don't think it's gonna happen without you doing nothing. The stone represents the hardness of your heart, the doubt, and the fact in your heart you have finalized it. So God says, now this may, for some of you, may take some fasting and praying, because it did that for me. I had to fast and pray these last 21 days, and some things had to turn for me, but I had to remove the stone. Who is it that you're still blaming for your situation? Okay, y'all don't, don't like this part of the message. No, 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 no. You got to take away the stone. But you don't know my daddy was never there for me. Yeah, and? Do you know how many daddies was not there for people and yet they've been powerful and made things out of their life? You can't use that as an excuse when you got Jesus. But you don't know how wrong they did me, how they manipulated me. They were not there for me. You better, you better take, get rid of that stone. It's blocking your blessing. Look at somebody say, take away the stone. Take away the stone. Then he says, and then, then he says, as they, as he says, now, and, and, and Martha said, Mary or Martha, when I forget what they was Mary, she said, you, he said, Lord, it stink it. I'm going to take away the stone. You know how bad this situation stinks? It stinks because it happened to me. It ain't happened for nobody else. It stinks. I'm tired of even thinking about it. Number two, look at somebody say, embrace the stink. Because even though you've done, you've done moved the stone, listen to me, I don't care who you are, the residue of what you went through still leaves pain, still leaves some shame, and you probably don't want to deal with it and face it. But God says, embrace the stink. Make that phone call anyway. 
Send that text anyway, even if they don't respond. You embrace the stink. Jesus says, no, 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 no. Jesus says, no, 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 no. If you believe, you will see. Look at somebody said, if you believe this word, you will see. It's about done. If you believe, I get three codes, but it's the second one. The Ravens don't play the 8.30, so just chill. Because you're going to need this. If you believe, verse 40, you will see the glory of God. What do I have to do to, to see the glory of God? Come on, say it again. What do I have to do? You can't see to believe in the kingdom. In the kingdom, many of you want to see, see, if, if I can see God. No, 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 no. Now you live by faith. God says, if you believe, you'll see. Now, this is what God is saying to you today. Despite what it looks like, despite how it feels, or despite how it really is, if you believe, I will suspend time to restore years which looked final and I will raise you up. That's a few people that believe. I'm going to say that again. I ain't no motivational speaker. I'm a prophet of God. If you believe and receive this word, I will suspend time and restore years that the devil has stolen and I will show you a miracle and I'm shouting right now for the testimonies that are about to happen in the next 30 days somebody give God a praise and thirdly obedience don't just hear this good word obey it they went and moved the stone and it's one thing to believe God, but it's another thing to have faith in what he says. Because faith is acting on what you believe. Don't leave out of here today and not do something. Because faith without works is dead. If you really believe what I'm saying, I need you to do something. All that says to God, I believe you. And for some of you, you're going to have to give him a praise. Right now, while your heart is heavy, while you don't understand, heaven is recording your praise. God says, faith activates the power. Yes, you may believe, but if you have faith, you will activate resurrection power. No, not when you get home, but right here, start praising him. Right this morning, say, God, I thank you. I thank you that it's already done. I thank you that you hear me always. I thank you that you never fail me. I thank you that I can trust you. Yes, Lord, great is thy faithfulness, Lord, unto me, all I have ever needed, your hand has provided, Jesus, I'll never forget what you've done for me, Jesus, I'll never forget how you set me free, somebody give God a praise. Now, Jesus says, Father, I thank you. Thank you that you hear me always. But he says, for the people who are here, this is what the Bible says. He says, for the people who are standing by. There are some people who have been standing by. And this time, God is going to do it because it's time for the people around you to believe in Christ and believe in you. Okay, I, I don't have nobody to understand what I just said. They've always believed God, but now it's time for them to believe in you. Woo! 
Somebody shout hallelujah. There are some people who have just been standing by. In this season, God says, I'm going to do it for the standbys. They weren't going to reach out to you and help you. They are just going to stand by and watch and see what happens to you. Oh, yeah, they're just standing by and been talking about you. They've just been standing by and watching you hurt, hoping you fail. Come on, somebody. They've just been standing by. Come on, look at somebody say, he's about to do it for the standbys. They've been just standing by waiting for you to fall. But God told me to tell you this next blessing is for the standbys. Because I'm preparing a table in the presence of your enemies. Some trials and tests are not just for you but you are going through for your relative to get saved you are going through for your co-worker to say what must I do to be saved so you got to go through it so that God can get the glory and that those who've been standing by can see my glory I'm done brother Will but that's all I went through it for for God to give the glory so God says Lazarus come forth and God says today whatever your name is come forth Will come forth Charles come forth Beverly come forth Kelly come forth Gregory come forth can you hear heaven calling you get up and do what God calls you get up I'm about to bless you get up and when he called the name because whenever God calls, all of the universe has got to respond. Look at three people and tell them he just called my name. I don't care what it looks like. He just called my name. And so when he called Lazarus, Lazarus come leaping out with the grave clothes. He came leaping out. I'm here to tell somebody in this season, your blessing is about to leap towards you. Somebody shout yes. Thanks for joining Dream Life Worship Center here on Grace and Glory. Also, you have time to join us online or in person. Visit dreamlifewc.com. We would love to see you at the dream. Don't miss it. Welcome back. Hope you've enjoyed the show. I have enjoyed immensely this time with you. And uh, yes. <laughs> yeah, I'm going to get it. But uh, I, this first trip in the United States has been uh, really a whirlwind for you, not only getting an opportunity to see the country, but also you've had uh, some special appearances all around the country, right? Yes, of course. I've had fun going to churches, major churches of people that I love and respect. And I've had so much fun. The presence of the Lord is seriously like hovering in these South, yeah. uh, South American, in these American churches so much. It's been so mind blowing. Like it's been What are you so going to take back with you from the experience? Being naked before God wholeheartedly. I definitely enjoyed that. And I definitely enjoyed um, making time for God. You know, that, that making time for God that we've, we've been too static and we've been too, it has to happen like this or else. So now you've got the new that. single, but I understand, I, I heard a little word say that you're going to be recording real soon. I will. So we're, we're in the business right now uh -huh. <laughs> of trying to take out new music of a whole album because this one was an EP. We want to take a whole full album and a whole body. So I've been working on that. God but in the me. meantime, folk can enjoy your music on YouTube, right? Definitely on YouTube, on Spotify, on Apple Music, on iTunes, on Pandora, every single place that you can think of where there's music platform you will find HLE. And they can follow you. They can. HLE, say live, L-I-V-E, everywhere. And maybe we'll have a challenge somewhere along the way where we're challenged to see who can pronounce your name the That'd best. That'd be fun. <laughs> a lot of fun. 
<laughs> Listen, I could not help but notice the fact that you are comfortable in front of the camera and understand oh. you get a TV show back home, right? I do. I have a TV show back home. In fact, just two weeks ago, I was nominated for Best Presenter and Best Show uh, for the TV Awards back home. So, yes, I do have a TV show. And, I can tell. But I'm learning so much from you. Like, you have, he has this beautiful, I'm going to tell, he has this beautiful straight face at the end of each segment where he goes and freezes and doesn't flinch. <laughs> I'm going to learn that. We'll talk about it. <laughs> In the meantime, as we prepare to leave, of course, we remind you, you can always stay connected with us at www.allthingsleemichaels.com. I enjoyed seeing you oh, and look you forward so to much, celebrating you again. Okay? Thank you. All right. And we look forward to you connecting with us again next week. Same time, same station. Until then, remember to walk in his grace, live Amen. in his glory. We look forward to the connect right here on Grace and Glory.